Doll Brown's Legacy. Your response on our first video was brilliant. And here we are with another informative video. In this one, we'll talk about syphilis and if it is curable or not. Syphilis is an infection that develops due to Treponema pallidum bacteria. These bacteria can spread between people through direct contact with a syphilitic sore. These sores may develop on the skin or mucous membranes of the vagina, anus, rectum, lips or mouth. Syphilis is most likely spread during oral, anal or vaginal sexual activity. People rarely pass the bacteria on through kissing. The first sign is a painless sore on either the genitals, rectum, mouth or another part of the skin. Some people do not notice the sore as it does not cause pain. These sores though resolve on their own. However, if a person does not receive treatment, the bacteria remain in the body. They can remain dormant in the body for decades before reactivating and damaging organs, including the brain. Doctors categorize the stage of syphilis as either primary, secondary, latent or tertiary. A variety of symptoms define each stage. The disease can be contagious during the primary and secondary stages and occasionally the early latent phase. Tertiary syphilis is not contagious, but it has the most severe symptoms. The symptoms of primary syphilis include one or more painless, firm and round syphilitic sores or chancres. These appear 10 days to 3 months after the bacteria enter the body. Chancres resolve within 2 to 6 weeks. However, without treatment, the disease may remain in the body and progress to the next phase. Secondary syphilis symptoms include sores that resemble oral, anal and genital warts, rough, red or red-brown rash that starts on the trunk and spreads to the entire body, including the palms and soles, muscle aches, fever, a sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, unexplained weight loss and fatigue. These symptoms may resolve a few weeks after they first appear. They might also return several times over a longer period. Without treatment, secondary syphilis can progress to the latent and tertiary stages. The latent phase can last for several years. During this time, the body will harbor the disease without symptoms. However, the T. pallidum bacteria remain dormant in the body and there is always a risk of recurrence. Doctors still recommend treating syphilis at this stage even if symptoms do not occur. After the latent phase, tertiary syphilis may develop. Tertiary syphilis can occur 10 to 30 years after the onset of the infection. This is usually after a period of latency during which there are no symptoms. At this stage, syphilis damages heart, blood vessels, liver, bones and joints. Gumas may also develop. These are soft tissue swellings that can occur anywhere on the body. Organ damage means that tertiary syphilis can often lead to death. Treating syphilis before it reaches this stage is therefore critical. Neurosyphilis is a condition that develops when T. pallidum bacteria have spread to the nervous system. It often has links to latent and tertiary syphilis. However, it can occur at any time after the primary stage. A person with neurosyphilis may be asymptomatic for a long time. Alternatively, symptoms might develop gradually. Congenital syphilis is severe and frequently life-threatening. T. pallidum bacteria can transfer from a pregnant woman to a fetus through the placenta and during the birth process. Data suggests that without screening and treatment, about 70% of women with syphilis will have an adverse outcome in pregnancy. Adverse outcomes include early fetal or neonatal death, preterm birth or low birth weight and infection in infants. In 2015, the WHO confirmed Cuba as the first country in the world to have entirely eradicated congenital syphilis. Now here is the question whether it is curable or not. Anyone who is worried that they might have syphilis 
or another sexually transmitted infection should speak to a doctor as soon as possible, as prompt treatment can cure it. Early treatment with penicillin is important, as the disease can lead to life-threatening consequences in the long term. At a later stage, syphilis remains curable. However, a person may require a longer course of penicillin. If nerve or organ damage occurs during the later stage of syphilis, treatment will not repair it. Treatment can, however, prevent further damage by clearing the bacteria from a person's body. Treatment for syphilis can be successful, particularly in the early stages. The treatment strategy will depend on the symptoms and how long a person has harbored the bacteria. However, during the primary, secondary or tertiary stage, people with syphilis will typically receive an intramuscular injection of penicillin G benzatine. Tertiary syphilis will require multiple injections at weekly intervals. Neurosyphilis requires intravenous penicillin every four hours for two weeks to remove the bacteria from the central nervous system. Curing the infection will prevent further damage to the body and safe sexual practices can resume. However, do note that treatment cannot undo any damage that has already occurred. People with a penicillin allergy can sometimes use an alternative medication in the early stages. However, during pregnancy and in the tertiary stages, anyone with an allergy will undergo penicillin desensitization to allow for safe treatment. Following delivery, newborn infants with syphilis should undergo antibiotic treatment. Chills, fever, nausea, achy pain and a headache may occur on the first day of treatment. Doctors refer to these symptoms as a gerish Herzheimer reaction. It does not indicate that a person should stop treatment. A doctor will carry out a physical examination and ask about a person's sexual history before carrying out clinical tests to confirm syphilis. And these tests include blood tests. These can detect a current or past infection as antibodies to the syphilis bacteria will be present for many years. Bodily fluid. A doctor can evaluate fluid from a shanka during the primary or secondary stage. Cerebrospinal fluid. A doctor may collect this fluid through a spinal tap and examine it to monitor the disease's effects on the nervous system. If a person receives a diagnosis of syphilis, they must notify any sexual partners. Their partners should also undergo testing. Local services are available to notify sexual partners of their potential exposure to syphilis, enable testing and, if necessary, administer treatment. Healthcare professionals will also recommend testing for HIV. Many providers now offer at-home tests for syphilis. And on that note, it's time for us to call it a day. But we do hope that you liked the video and found it informative. And if you did, then, well, you know the drill. Subscribe to the Doll Brown's Legacy channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Your valuable suggestions are very important to us, so do post them in the comment section. And I'll see you with another informative video next time.